questions coming up a lot let's address it generational curses how to fast and break out of generational curses so first step one is identifying what the curses are like what are these curses right and in order for you to do that you need to remember conversations that were had around you remember the stories that were told around you and also the guidance of the holy spirit he's going to guide you in what to say or what to address okay so jesse um had sons and the youngest son was david king david but when the prophet samuel came to the house of jesse to request that jesse collects his sons and brings them before samuel per instructions of God, Jesse neglects to collect the youngest son. He refuses to collect the youngest son. And this kind of tells you that there may be some type of rejection because it takes Samuel, the prophet Samuel saying, hey, do you have any other sons? Because God is like, none of these are it. And so Samuel's like, do you have any other sons? Are you hiding a son from me? And he says, oh yeah. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. I have um, the youngest one. You know, he is off shepherding. He is being a shepherd. So it was so bad that he acted like he had forgotten he had a son, right? He acted like he had forgotten he had the youngest son. The youngest child in a family is rarely forgotten. Guys, in general, generally speaking, the youngest son in the family is a baby. They are babied. They are not forgotten in some random function. But we see Jesse forgetting that he has a youngest son, refusing to bring the youngest son over to the to um, Prophet Samuel to do what God had instructed Prophet Samuel to do. All right. So here you write down, hmm, grand great grandfather Jesse, uh, maybe possible rejection towards my grandfather david all right um next um you see that the brothers of the brothers of david rejected him as well like they were not very kind to him when he went there to ask about their well-being during a war they were very mean to him okay so again rejection from siblings write down rejection between siblings or strife or division between siblings Maybe some a little bit of jealousy included, but just write that down, right? To David, your grandfather, your grandfather David, um, had sinned against God by taking another man's wife, impregnating her, and murdering the husband. So there you write down bloodshed. You write down breaking up of marriages. You write down... Um, taking of another man's wife right you write all these things down because you're trying to understand what all you have to address in your bloodline and then you see you know um the child of that affair dies so write down like premature death you know i mean it was judgment from god but still write down premature death and then get to your next person who is your 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 um basically your uncles at this point these are your uncles so you see that when david did what he did he brought in a lot of consequences he repented yes but he was not exempted from the consequences of what he had done all right so here you're writing down well um my brother am my uncle amnon uncle amnon had impure thoughts towards my auntie tamar he made up this scheme and lie about being sick and wanting my auntie tamar to come in and take care of him and he violated her he did he did the most grievous violation of my auntie and when that happened, my grandfather did nothing about it. So again, rejection. Also, incest, impure thoughts. Then Absalom, my uncle, who is the, the brother, the full brother of my auntie Tamar, grew bitter because of that. 
he grew bitter he was angry towards my father of what he had done which was zero zilt nada towards um justice for my sister my auntie right so you write down um incest in the family you write down hatred bitterness murder in the family you write these things down because you have you have to understand the full picture of what you have to deal with in the courts of heaven okay so now absalom your uncle decides like oh i'm going to revenge against my father in a slight way so absalom goes to his mother's side of the family stays there for some time and then schemes a plan to overtake my father's kingdom and then he violates my father's concubines on the roof of the palace so disrespect disgrace humiliation towards elders write that down okay dishonor write that down okay and then you realize wow my grandfather had to run for his life because absalom was actually looking to kill him and take over his kingdom loss of possible inheritance write that down then you realize okay so my father becomes a king but in order for him to become a king my my um my mother no his mother we have um but she had to come up with a plan because it almost didn't work. It almost did not work. Right? So write everything down. Then write down also um, the fact that, excuse me, even though um, your dad, King Solomon, became king, he violated the principle in Deuteronomy 17, 17, which says, a king should not have too many wives, lest they take his heart away from God. And you're seeing that your father was worshiping Ashereth, Chemosh, and Molech. Because his many wives took his heart away from the Lord. And you're like, wow, I need to address that too. There were high places and altars given over, dedicated to Chemosh, Ashereth, and Molech. I need to address that as Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. Okay? And then you realize that, hmm, in my bloodline, my father only has three documented children, even though he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. So what happened to the rest of my siblings? What is, like, what happened? Now, if your father was worshiping Moloch, the god of child sacrifice, the probability is high that these children were given up to that demonic entity because his wives who worshiped Moloch required that of him. Okay? These are all things that you're writing down. You write these things down to be able to address this in the courts of heaven. Asking God, Lord, every charge concerning idolatry, fornication, murder, incest. I'm addressing them, Lord. Which one are we addressing today? Because sometimes you go there to address everything and only three things, three or two things are addressed. Because you're not ready to address the other things. They require deeper consecration, deeper giving, deeper prayers. And you're just not ready to address those. Say, so, Lord, I'm here in your courts. What can I address today? What can we address today? But I'm going to confess this sin, this sin, this sin, this sin. Using Leviticus 26 verse 40 to 42. If you confess the sins of your forefathers. Where they were contrary to me. They were contrary to me. I'll, for, I'll forgive you. I'll remember my covenant. He will, God will remember his covenant. When you confess your sins and the sins of your forefathers. But in order for you to confess your sins, you have to remember about, the, like, where do these things come from? What, what am I confessing? If you have nothing, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you in dreams and in visions what to address. I promise you, He'll do it. Amen. And as you're fasting, don't forget the three acts of righteousness giving fasting and praying giving fasting and praying jesus said when you fast 
fastest way.